Search Auto Trader. The second part of this journey to the Samola hill climb is getting a better understanding of what Samola is about, some of the risks, some of the challenges. The best way to do this is speak to somebody who is very experienced and has been up the Samola hill climb in an AMG. Clint, you've got quite a bit of experience, four-time SA national champ, um, both on-road and off-road, and you've done the hill before. Um, what do I need to know about Samola? While I've attended the event, I've never driven up the hill. Look, I mean, it, there are a couple of angles to this one, and that is the, the road surface conditions are not equal all the way up, so you get a bit of rough, you get a bit, in other words, a little bit of a loss of grip and some that you've got a little bit more grip as well. But I think the biggest thing there more is um, we've got to try and use a, the bend as straight as possible with as much speed. Now, in order to do that, um, you've got to have the right tire pressures because remember, you're not warming up the tires. Yes. Um, so we're going to try and get a balance there just so we've got enough grip to go all the way through because you're hardly using any brakes. I think on a, on, a, on a second turn, you're using them quite heavily, but to carry speed. Um, and it's a general flow. It's momentum all the way through. Try and set the car up, keep it as balanced as possible with as much power. And that's, I think that's, that's really the game more than anything else. It's those guys that bring the most power get to the line first um, with the fastest time. So our cars, uh, both a GT63 and a C63, get off the line pretty quickly so we can get up to speed very quickly. Um, it's just cognizance to the fact that we do have cold tires. Uh, operating temperature is very important, so we might come down a little bit just to generate heat a little bit more. Um, and then it seems to last all the way through because I don't generate too much heat. Um, but it's to try and keep these cars with all this immense power as stable as possible. They turn very well. Um, they, they, I think they're very, very balanced, especially when, when you're tucking into the corners, very responsive on the front, and it's to get to know that. So first up is going to be, you're going to go a bit blind. Yeah. I did as well. I did jump onto the simulator beforehand just to get a bit of familiarization. Um, and that did help to a certain extent, but it's like anything. You can, you can drive up there, but when you're going at pace, it's totally different completely changes the game. Things start happening at, a, at an alarming rate. And, and the same goes for gaming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You can do it all day if you want, um, but you don't get the significance of it. And, uh, and, and it's not that then precise uh, in, in terms of reality. And I think uh, that's, where, that's where the challenge is a little bit. Um, and that's pretty much then gonna be all up to you having racing experience as well to be able to go and figure that out on the first one after all the preparation we can do to go and nail it on the, and on the button. And you talk about practicing it in the simulator and I used a lot of simulator work to prepare for this. Uh, we're actually going to hop into the simulator with guys from ATK and just practice the Samola heel climb on the simulator first, but there's never the same risk. Always in the back of the mind you know there's a reset button, this can't hurt, whereas at Samola, the risks are very real. Look, um, Mika Sala and I uh, did a bit of preparation just beforehand because none of us had been up there. And, um, and, and that just, again, it just gave us a bit of orientation, at least when you know what you're going into and where to point and, um, and how fast one can actually then get to the corners. But it also it takes what you're doing in the corners in reality You've got the car in your hands versus not the simulator effect in your hands. Yes. It does make it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So the whole dynamic then changes. And then it's up to you to know how to be prepared for that and handle it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it'll be my first time actually going up the hill and definitely at pace. So yeah. keen to see how it goes. Yeah, well, you've, look, I mean, again, uh, you know, all-wheel steer um, in a C63, uh, formatic, uh, you've got the, you know, the electronic assistance, um, you know, through the, the e-performance. I believe, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a car that's up there and I'm going to give uh, a lot of them, plus you behind the steering wheel, a go. And, 
And um, I'd, I believe that we can, we can really be there in the front, if not win. Okay, well, before that, let's get into a little bit of virtual training, and then we're going to head out on track and get our first taste of what this, uh, well, my first taste of what the C63S is, uh, is about. Thanks, Clint. So cut straight across and then we'll waste any time there. Extreme left and we start going on the inner. Carry the speed, start moving over to the right hand side. Keep it in, keep it in, keep it in. That's it. Now I'd say about 80% on the brakes here. So harder there after because we're going a little bit later. That's it. Carry it wide, cut it short. Good. Just going deeper like that helps you to carry speed more, mm -hmm. sort of less braking in a way. So you're sort of using them in conjunction with each other, just so you can carry more speed through that corner. Because it's actually a long turn. Yes. Not initially. It's about the setup there. That you can carry more speed and then eventually she meets around on the right hand side. Keep on the right. A lot of guys pull wide like that and then, and then they cross come the track. to the cross the track. It takes time. You're trying to get a shortcut here every yes, way yeah. that you can. Okay. All right, Clint, we're in the car now, so <laughs> getting to grips with it. But this is, as I said, a tech fest. Um, there's so much, and I suppose some people would even say too much to sit there and tinker with and play with, you know, so that you can extract the most out of it. But I suppose it's also because it's just such a versatile car that it's got all of these functions and features in it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's AMG, they, they, they want it to be interactive. And uh, if the customer is actually up to date with what he's just purchased and um, it can deliver power, it's just now it's knowledge um, and people being educated on how to maximize out of this. Mm. The fact that you've got e-drive is now helping combustion. Yeah. So we're having to set it that way as well. Although it's all automatic and it's intelligent, uh, we still need to do it on the system. And uh, that, uh, that takes a, getting, a bit of getting to know. I mean, it's not a car for novices and first time drivers. This is for a driving enthusiast with a little bit of experience, but you don't need full more race experience to be, still be able to enjoy it and extract mm. what you've paid for from it. Well, look, I mean, it's a, it's a global market car, this. Mm. It goes to anybody for that matter, and anybody that can afford it. Yeah. You have to have these driver assistance yeah. systems in place. Otherwise, you know, people are going to go and um, have big accidents. Yeah. Uh, so that's 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 vital. Um, in fact, if we could uh, not educate them to switch the systems off, maybe better like that. Yeah. Because you can obviously switch the systems off. Yeah. Um, and people just don't know how to drive it. So it's it's uh, it's very important um, that all these systems are in place. Okay. So. Do we modify anything more here? No. So if we if we're going to switch over to race mode, I just wanted to check on the on the boost more than anything else because that is certainly going to give you your 500 kilowatt and your 1,020 newton meters. Um, it's going to deliver all the way the electric assistance with a 400 volt battery in the back is going to assist you the whole way. Yeah. Um, and I have no doubt it's going to last to the end. Mm -hmm. No doubt. We were chatting a little earlier about we're anticipating approximately 50 seconds worth of run from start line to finish line. Yeah. And of that, we're sitting with about 35 seconds, roughly, mm. of full throttle application. Yeah. So that's a full 35 seconds that we're needing this 6.1 kilowatt hour battery to last yes. while we're asking, you know, all this from it. Um, I think... I, I predict mm -hmm. we're going to have just over half of it still available to us. And then be able to recoup that on the very, run back down the hill. Very quickly. Yeah. Uh, you know, like we said on the C63 is uh, mega quick yeah. with us on regeneration. Uh, the GT takes just a little bit longer than that. Um, but uh, this is newer technology. So um, 
I don't think we're even going to have to use the chargers on the plug. So we tracked it on the drive-in mm -hmm. um, just to, to check what the boost function was doing. Um, so uh, that will show us on the display exactly where maximum boost can be utilized on course yes. and where it's going to regen when you start, when, you, when you're actually coming off it. Using that boost, mm -hmm. is there anything special that I need to do or is it just merely the kick down function? It's basically saying to you that if you want maximum boost assistance, yeah. It'll flash. That's where that's where you want max. Okay. Foot flat. Foot flat. Okay. Um, and, it, you, and it believes then that you are set up and have enough straight track ahead of you to utilize yeah. the 500 kilowatts. So the only thing it's doing is it's, it's now we've tracked the actual circuit itself. It knows where boost is needed, where maximum speed is needed and power. And then uh, most likely when you're coming to the corner, you're going to be holding back, you're going to be on the brake, it's going to regenerate, it's, it's, it's going to recoup all the power for you, electric power, and then it's saying to you, yeah, use me. As soon as I sort of straighten the wheel coming out of the corner, it's going to, it's going to say, and say boost is ready. Let's go. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm excited to get this out on track. Yeah. Um, let's go and I'm uh, excited to see what you're going to do behind the wheel. Yeah, let's see. Uh, apprehensive, but this... Uh, because I mean, that's this is it's a lot of power, a lot of torque, and of course, a brand new vehicle, you know. So, let's get a, a first taste of things here. Yeah. I was expecting you to feel the weight far much more than this. It does. There's, but there's it's a bit mild. Of, there's a bit of weight to it. Yeah, and it's definitely manageable. Manageable. So, and that's just through a bit of input over there. So you you can just do a lift to point the nose. That's that's all you'll need. Brakes, you're not going to have to worry about really, because you know the first couple of corners. I mean, the brakes are still, you know, fairly. I mean, the brakes are cold. Yeah. Um, Going to really generate any heat into them, which is not really necessary, so you can really use them fairly hard. And the rest is because you can feel there's a little bit of a delay there, slight, yeah. Okay, any specific procedure here? Is it just hard on? On the brake, throttle down, release the brake. In race mode. That's it. Woohoo! Jeepers! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, that gets out of the blocks. <laughs> that turn two is going to be something. Wow. <laughs> You're going to have lots of fun. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Gosh, it takes beautiful. It's not bad. It's a little understeer, and you can understand. It's a consumer vehicle. They're going to build in a little more understeer than oversteer, but it is the the wider track in the front. I feel a lot more confident going in. Um, just knowing the car better, understanding the car better. And I think that's key is in order to extract the most out of a vehicle, you really do need to know what the vehicle can and cannot do. 
Absolutely. and where its limitations are. So I'm glad that I got this opportunity to just shake it down a little bit here on track, on a track that I know, uh, corners that I know, um, to see how it compares to other vehicles that I've driven here. Yeah. Um, and then I can modify my expectations, not my driving style, but my expectations around the vehicle heading up the hill. 100% correct. Search Auto Trader.